The more I look into it, the more I find that the entire world economy is run by like 600 dudes, and it's disturbing. I can understand it, and while it's gross, there can be some interesting parts to it. For instance, of course, who owns who? It can be a very revealing guessing game when you look into a company and find the reason it's so similar to another company is because they got the same dad. I think this is most revealing with grocery stores where Ralph's, King Super's, Dylan's, Food for Less, Fred Meyer are all Kroger stores, all owned by the Kroger company. This is shown in game companies where we got the Candy Crush guys being owned by Activision Blizzard, who is of course Activision and Blizzard. Gamers recognize King, Activision, and Blizzard for their very popular games, but scummy business practices. Following up the food chain though, as I often do once I discover a company, I find that Microsoft is trying to buy Activision Blizzard. Microsoft is huge themselves, alongside owning GitHub, LinkedIn, as well as Xbox, who owns 343, Mojang, Obsidian, Bethesda, Arcane, and id. This pyramid of companies is quite simple though compared to when it includes partial ownership, where you get these really strange German and Japanese companies with all their convoluted cross-ownership webs. These webs are annoying and uninteresting both to look at and to understand. You get crap like the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance, with Renault having a controlling interest in Nissan, Nissan in the French government with 15% each in Renault, and Mitsubishi Motors being controlled by Nissan with a 34% stake. And I'm not sure if this has gone through yet or not, but Renault is going to transfer a portion of its stake in Nissan to a French trust. That way both Nissan and Renault own 15% in one another. And when I say Mitsubishi, I mean Mitsubishi Motors, because Mitsubishi is also owned in part by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries at 11% and Mitsubishi Corporation at 9%, who are themselves a part of the Mitsubishi Group, a group where all Mitsubishi companies except for Unipen coordinate in some way, but mustn't explicitly discuss business strategy because that would break antitrust law. To talk about the Mitsubishi group for a second, they're what's known as a kairetsu, so they hold a pretty significant stake in a lot of industries in Japan, but as a kairetsu, it's smaller scale than chaibuls and zaibetsus, which have had less antitrust restrictions. To give a sense of scale, the Mitsubishi group is still pretty large as one of the largest defense contractors in the world, the biggest trust banking service in the world, the biggest bank in Japan, the biggest trading company in Japan, a large producer of aerospace and automotive components, elevators, refrigerators, air conditioners, electrical equipment, printers, and many electronics, and I'm only just scratching the surface of the big three Mitsubishis, let alone the many smaller Mitsubishis, not including Unipen. To get back to game companies, I generally like Riot Games. I think they did a good enough job with Valorant, and while I think League of Legends is a time-sucking cosmetics peddling, soul-stealing addiction breeding, visually tantalizing black hole, I thought Arcane was good. I found out they were owned by Tencent, which likewise owns a lot more than just Riot. While I want to say Tencent is big, but not the biggest, that would be ignoring their very impressive title as the world's largest video game vendor, as well as their significant presence in social media media, e-commerce, music, internet services, and investment. Funnily enough, they also own 40% of Epic Games and have numerous ties and investments into other notoriously money-grubby video game companies like with Supercell, Ubisoft, Roblox, and even their in-house Tencent games. Tencent is very big, but similarly large would be Kakao, and arguably larger would be the Naver Jones, alongside SoftBank, which is also comparable, Z Holdings, which is just as large as both Naver and SoftBank, and also large would be the Mitsubishi Group in Japan, and generally large families like the Lee Byung Chil family, Chung Jiu Young family, Ku Yin Hua family, and Shin Kyuk Ho family, which are all responsible for huge portions of the South Korean economy. I find the size of these companies fascinating, if a little scary, especially when I consider how similar the real workings of these companies are to monopolies, oligopolies, and other imperfect, inefficient anti-consumer companies you find in your economic classes and in your sci-fi dramas. For me though, it begs the question, why is Apple considered the most profitable company in existence when their competition is Berkshire Hathaway, Saudi Arabia's oil company, China's oil company, and banks, and like, Samsung? I agree, Apple's huge, but what? What does that mean? Is Apple much, much bigger than I gave it credit for? There are a lot of companies that I see as bigger than Apple, but just aren't. 
I hear about Samsung, GM, Renault, LG, Sharp and Toshiba, the Chibos, and Zybetsus, and smaller scale Kairetsu, JP Morgan Chase, and BlackRock, and Vanguard, and S&P, and I cannot understand how these are smaller than Apple Inc. To defend it a little, banks obviously make bank, but I suppose since they have so many competitors, even just in the US, they're small by comparison. And while Apple stands up to the oil industry in any individual country, they aren't on par with the country themselves, especially in China's case where they have numerous companies all on par with Apple. And again, it could somewhat be defended for its profitability due to its small number of employees. Other large US companies are Walmart and Amazon, who both employ millions and Chinese companies which employ millions. Saudi Aramco though employs less than a hundred thousand and Apple employs less than two hundred thousand. Actually none of the top ten most profitable companies even employ half a million with the average being less than three hundred thousand. Still it's unprecedented that a company almost exclusively known for their phones to be so large. I still don't understand it. Anyway, if you're curious about acting like me and looking a bit into companies, I suggest you look into Vivendi. I find their history very interesting, but it's not really something I think would work if I just kept on talking about it. Both what they currently own and used to own are interesting. As a head start, they currently own Gameloft, which makes a bunch of mobile game ports, Daily Motion, and Studio Canal, which is deceptively large. Let me know what you find out.